Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, which reads, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. That's Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Today we continue our study of Genesis chapter 3. There are those who argue that male headship or leadership in marriage is a result of sin, but the responsibility that God gave men from the beginning is woven into the fabric of creation. It was part of how God designed things before sin came into the world. In today's passage, we learn for the first time the nature of the sin that caused the fall of humanity. And it was not merely that Adam ate the forbidden fruit. There was something that preceded the eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In verse 17 of today's passage, we read, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and you have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. This verse provides the rationale for Adam's punishment, which was that he had abandoned his headship. Adam's fundamental mistake was that he obeyed his wife instead of God. Adam's mistake was that instead of protecting Eve, he went along with her into sin. The Apostle Paul gives us the order of headship in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, which reads, Christ is the head of the man, the man is the head of the woman, and God is the head of Christ. In addition, it was also the Apostle Paul who informed us that Adam was not deceived in the fall. The woman was deceived and she concluded when she ate the fruit, she would become like God. But Adam was not deceived. He knew that if they ate the fruit, the fall would follow, that they would lose their relationship with God and that death would occur. He knew it but he deliberately disobeyed God and set his wife above God. He denied the headship of Christ over himself, and as a result, he surrendered his own headship over the woman. As a result of man's deliberate sin, the ground was cursed. The consequences for Adam and Eve were directed at their points of highest fulfillment. For Eve... It was in her capacity as a mother and a wife. For Adam, it was in his capacity as breadwinner and provider. Adam struggled to provide the bread that he and his family needed to live. Thorns and thistles appeared and began to cover the ground, and man was introduced to unending toil and sorrow. The word toil is exactly the same word in the Hebrew that is translated pain for the woman. It is heartbreaking sorrow. Work is not the curse given to man. Work is a blessing. In fact, it is from our work that we gain our dignity. It is toil that is the curse. If we do not have work to do, we are of all people most miserable. Work is a blessing from the Lord. But hard, grinding, toiling work is a result of the fall. 
In verse 18 of today's passage, we read, Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. As we've been learning from Genesis chapter 3, when sin came, came decay, disease, disorder, and death. The original Eden fell into chaos, and this is the general feature of life, that we are moving down a pathway toward decay, disease, disorder, and death. In verse 19 of today's passage, we read, In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. It is the sense of death that lurks at the boundaries of our lives. It gives us a feeling of futility about life. In Luke chapter 12, after the rich man had built his barns and filled them, that the Lord Jesus said to him, You fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Then he asked the rich man a question. Then Whose shall these things be? This is the question death forces us to face. We struggle to amass things on this earth, and then what a sense of futility there is in having to pass all of those things we have amassed along to someone else. No one ever dies as a millionaire because no one in this world can take their wealth along with them into eternity. Modern science has verified that man is made of the same stuff that rocks are made of. In fact, our bodies are made of 85% water. Death is not really the original end for man, but a tragic punishment for our disobedience. Adam worked until he died. And when he died, he returned to the dust. After sin came into the world, death came with it. And Adam's death was described as a reversal of the creation process. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Adam's name literally means dirt or dust. So his name was a perpetual reminder of his destiny. At the end of verse 19, we see that man will be ultimately defeated by work, as the ground will eventually swallow him up in death. But even in this punishment, there is yet God's provision. Although work is painful, it does bear fruit. And the first couple had offspring. And one day, one of their offspring will defeat the serpent. Evil and pain still hounds mankind, but they won't stalk us forever. And as God has promised, death will be swallowed up in victory. For those of us who have believed that the Lord Jesus toiled on the cross for our rest and was raised from the dead, will one day live in a land where love and work will be blessed, not cursed. For now, pain is our punishment, but for eternity, rest will be our reward. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.